So I wanted to go over how we can actually configure .NET applications using appsettings.json and how we can utilize strongly typed configuration in our apps. So let's take a look. So here I just have a basic web application. We're just configuring some services, building the app, configuring the app, and then running it. So we currently don't have any endpoints at the moment. So what I'm gonna do is create a endpoint for let's say getting a configuration value. So I'm just gonna create an endpoint app.mapget and we're just gonna call this iconfig. So we have this interface called iConfiguration. What this iConfiguration is, it's just a set of key value pairs for our configuration properties. So I can use this essentially just like a dictionary, right? So I can go return configuration and let's say I wanna configure a name property. This is just gonna be returning a string value with this particular key. So if I open up our app settings.json and I put in name and make that equal to Jono, when I execute this endpoint, I should see Jono being returned. Here we have our endpoint. I'm gonna hit try it out, execute. And you can see we get Jono, which is good. Now what happens when I change this? Let's say I change this to Bob and I hit go again. We now get Bob which is good. So we get hot reload functionality without having to restart the application or rebuild the application or anything like that. What if we wanted something a little bit more complicated though? What if we wanted something with like multiple properties and nested arrays and all this sort of stuff? Well, we can actually use the I options pattern to create strongly typed configuration in our apps. So first thing I'm gonna do is go back to our app settings.json and I'm gonna call this name settings. So this is gonna have a property of first name and the value is going to be Jono, and it's also gonna have a last name, and it's gonna have some hobbies. Now we have this object, a JSON object that we want to map to a, like a C sharp class, right? We want it strongly typed. So what we're gonna do is create a class that is going to map to that JSON object inside of our app settings.json. So I'm gonna just create a class called name settings, and we're just gonna add the properties. First name, last name, Hobbies. Here we have our name settings class, which is going to map the same properties, first name, last name, hobbies, as our JSON object here. How do we tell .NET to say, okay, this JSON object is going to map to this particular class? How do we do that? So what we can do inside of our configure services area is we can tell .NET that, hey, this class is going to map to this JSON object inside of our configuration. So what we do is we go builder.services.configure, and this is a generic, so we can pass in our name settings. And then what we're gonna be doing is actually passing in the section in our app settings to what this is gonna to configure to. So we're gonna do builder.configuration.getSection and we called it name settings. So to get access to our strongly typed configuration that we just set up, rather than injecting I configuration, we're gonna be injecting the I options of type name settings. And I just need to include this namespace and I'm just gonna change this to configuration to options. And what is iOptions? Well, it's just gonna be a wrapper around our configuration. So if I look at this definition of this interface, we're just gonna have one single property of tOptions, which is gonna be generic. So that's gonna be of type name settings. So if I go back here and I just return options.value, if we hover over value, we'll see that we get of type name settings. So let's run this and see what it does. So I'm gonna execute our endpoint here and I'm gonna try it out and we hit go. You'll see that we get our uh, configuration options, right? It's in our object, which is good. So what happens when we change the configuration? Let's go to our app settings. I'm gonna change this from Jono to Bob. And now let's hit execute. And what's going on? Where it's not changing. Why is this not changing? iOptions is only built at startup. And so it's only built once, so you're not gonna get that hot reload functionality, unfortunately. So that's something that you need to keep in mind when you're using this. If you don't need hot reload, iOptions is perfectly fine. But if you do need hot reload, we can use the second option, which is iOptions snapshot. Okay, so we don't wanna to have to restart our application to get the new configuration changes and everything like that. We want hot reload, so we just wanna be able to change it in our app settings and not have to restart our application at all. So what we can do instead is actually inject something called iOptions snapshot. So I'm just gonna create a couple of variables here so we can see what's happening. So I'm just gonna go var config equals options.value var config snapshot. And let's return these values in an object. So we can see what both of them look like at the exact same time. So let's run this 
and let's see what we get back. So I'm going to execute our endpoint now and let's see what we've got. So we've got Bob for both of them, which is what we expect, right? Our configuration is Bob. So if I change this to Jono and I go and run this again, you'll see the first one is Bob and the second one is Jono. So we're getting that hot reload functionality, which is really, really good. So now that we've seen that iOption Snapshot can give us the hot reload functionality, let me show you one little quirk with using iOption Snapshot. So I'm just gonna add a 10 second delay here. And what I'm gonna do is do config, config snapshot two, and I'm gonna read the value again. And let's create this, let's just copy this over, config snapshot two, and config snapshot two. Okay, so let's run this and let's see what happens. So before I'm gonna hit execute, I just wanna check our configuration. It's set to Jono Williams, right? And if I hit execute and then quickly switch back, change Jono to Bob, hit save and go back. You can see we're still inside of our delay, which is good. So this should showcase exactly what I'm saying. So if we look at the result, see config is Jono, snapshot, is Jono, and snapshot two is still Jono, even though we changed it before the delay finished. So what's going on here? Well, one of the quirks with iOption snapshot is that the configuration is only built once during a scope. And a scope is, let's think of it like a period of time. So think of a HTTP request. We have the request going in and the request going out. That period of time is considered a scope. So what if we wanted to have hot reload functionality within a scope. So any time throughout our application, when, whenever we read configuration, we want it to be the most up-to-date as possible. What can we use then? Well, we can use something called iOptions Monitor. Let's inject an iOptions Monitor of type name settings. Rather than our config snapshot two, let's call this config monitor. And rather than using the option snapshot, we're gonna be using the options monitor and we're gonna be using the current value. And let's also change this to config monitor and we're gonna be using this variable instead. So what we should expect here is the configuration monitor value should be different to our snapshot value if we update it before this delay has finished. So before I execute the endpoint, I just wanted to confirm our configuration. So our configuration is set to Jono Williams. And if I go back to our endpoints and I execute this, so I'm gonna hit execute, so it's loading. If I go back here and change this to Bob, hit save, you can see we're still loading. So we got in there before the delay actually finished. And here we go. So now we have our response body. So let's have a look, see what's going on. So our I options is set to Jono Williams, which is what we expect, because that's what it was when we first started. So the iOption snapshot is what we expect. It's Jono Williams because when the request first started, it was set to Jono Williams. So the configuration is gonna be Jono Williams throughout the whole scope of that request. And then our iOptions monitor is set to Bob, which is what we expect, right? Because during that scope of the request, we actually change the configuration to Bob. And iOptions monitor is always gonna read the most up-to-date value, whether it's within a scope or in a singleton or in a transient, it doesn't matter. It's always gonna read the most up-to-date value from that. So let's do a little bit of a recap of what we just covered. We have I configuration. It's not strongly typed, but it is hot reloadable. So we have I options. It is strongly typed, but it's not hot reloadable. So whatever the configuration is at application startup, that's what it's gonna be for the entire application. So we have iOptions snapshot. It is strongly typed and it's somewhat hot reloadable. So what I mean by somewhat hot reloadable is we need to think of the scope. So an iOptions snapshot will rebuild the configuration inside of a scope. So throughout that scope, it's gonna be, it's gonna remain the same the entire time, but each scope is gonna have its configuration rebuilt. And here we have iOptions monitor. It is strongly typed and it's fully hot reloadable. So whenever you access iOptions Monitor and you do options monitor dot current value, it's going to reread the configuration and rebuild the configuration at that exact point in time when that code is being executed. It doesn't care about scopes. It doesn't care about whether a request is starting or not. It only cares about, hey, when you're calling dot current value, you're getting the most up-to-date value at that current point in time. So that's it for this video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you in the next one.